All right, I believe that we are live. <laughs> uh, greetings, everybody. This is Johnny Lamb. I'm coming to you from my office from uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, I want the first. I want to be the first to say I just read this just a few seconds ago. Or whatever on uh, Fox News, I guess it's verified on Twitter and with Fox News and so forth. But a judge has ordered Kim Davis to be released from jail. And I say yes and amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Um, I don't think it's happened as of yet. But uh, um, we're going to keep praying and believing, believing that it will happen. Um, as promised, as I said to people on Twitter and so forth and on Facebook, that I was going to make a, a video about my response uh, to uh, Kim, Kim Davis. Uh, forgive me because... I'm, on, I'm recording this on an iPad, and I guess I have to look over there by the Empire State Building <laughs> in order to see straight. So that if I look straight, then I don't. And so it's kind of, I mean, I, I guess I don't look straight to you guys or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> just bear with me, okay? Um, yeah, this has, been, this has been something that's been heavy, you know, on my heart. Uh, basically for two reasons. Um, one is I've been just absolutely flabbergasted on how Christians have responded to this thing and saying that Kim Davis works with, uh, you know, a state and so she has to obey the state and, you know, since she didn't obey the state, then she deserves jail. And I'm like, that that's ludicrous. That's ridiculous is what that is. Um, we even have uh, some close friends that kind of feel that way. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, and that are Christians. And but anyway, you know, we agree to disagree and it's no big deal. Um, as far as that goes. And then the other reason, something that's heavy on my heart, is uh, I, I want to make a Christian, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a uh, presentation uh, um, from my heart about the whole thing as it relates to uh, homosexuality and Christians and so forth. Um, so you know what, I, I think I'll begin there. Um you know, Christians basically have had this thing with homosexuality where, you know, whoever's dealing with homosexuality or whatever, that they, you know, you know, sham the, you know, shove, sham, sham and shove <laughs> the Bible down their throat and basically say, you know, God says no and, you know, and so forth and etc. And, um, you know, and since it says in the Bible, then you got to believe it, then, you know, it's wrong and so forth. Um you know what? Uh, I, I don't. I don't take that view. Um, um, a lot of you might be, oh my God, he believes in homosexuality. No, listen to what I'm saying. Um, I don't believe in homosexuality. I, I abide by the Word of God, and my Word of God is right here, you know, electronically. But uh, I believe in the Holy Bible, and uh, uh, you got to understand why homosexuality is a sin. And yes, I said it, homosexuality is a sin. There's no two ways about it. You know, I think that's one of the reasons that we have so many issues within our society today is because we don't abide by standards. And people, I personally believe, and so do millions of Christians throughout the world, that the Bible, Genesis through Revelation, is the inspired Word of God. And guess what? It is the standard. And for those of you who don't know him, it's actually him. It's actually him. It says that in the Word of God. It says it in uh, John chapter 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and he was God. I'm paraphrasing, but look it up. John chapter 1, Gospel of John chapter 1. So the Word of God is God. Okay? So since the Word of God is God, you know, this is the standard. It's the standard that we live by. It's the standard that we abide by. And these people that wrote the Bible were inspired by the Lord. You know, the Lord actually lived within them in the New Testament after Jesus rose from the dead, again from the dead, excuse me. Jesus lived in them. The Holy Spirit lived in them. And even in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come on them and couldn't come into them yet because Jesus hadn't died on the cross and rose again from the dead, but it came on them. And so, listen to me. Yeah, we're talking about God Almighty, okay? But let's get to the, the whole thing about homosexuality so you guys can understand. Um, especially for people who are watching who are homosexuals. 
Um, you know what? Here's what you need to know. The reason that God does not want you to be in homosexuality, to be a homosexual, is because He knows what is best for you. That's it. So if He put it in His Bible that it's sin, it's sin. There's no two way, ways about it. It is sin. It's sin. And, uh, but that, you know, you know, for those of you out there who are homosexual and so forth, probably, oh my God, you know, I can't believe you said that and whatever. And it's like, it is, it's sin. But you know what? When the Lord shows us our sin, guess what? He gives us freedom to not sin for those who know him. That's the title of my video here. Freedom to not sin. Freedom to not sin. So he gives you freedom to not sin. Okay. And you need to know that when you're participating in homosexual lifestyle or you're, you know, going through homosexuality and going towards homosexuality or choosing homosexuality and so forth, and it is a choice, it's a choice, it's not something that you were born with, it's not something that's a sickness or any of that type of stuff, I hate that stuff, it's a sin, it's a choice, it is a choice, believe you me, it is a choice, it's very clear within the Bible. And for those of you who, you know, uh, don't know the Bible, uh, in Romans chapter 1, which was written by the Apostle Paul, it says, now listen to me, when God writes about sin, he writes about sin, and you know, this is sin, this is sin, this is sin. But Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, actually said that homosexuality is an abomination. For those of you who don't know what an abomination is, that's the highest level of sin that there is before the Lord. It's an abomination. Okay? It is not something to play with. It is an abomination. And if you choose that life, you're actually, you're actually sowing, you know, like a farmer sows, you're sowing into death. Death for yourself. Because Paul said that too. He said, he, I'm paraphrasing like Romans 6 or something like that or whatever, but for those of you who know the Bible, you can help me. But it talks about that um, if you sin, you know, it's bad. You know, I'm paraphrasing. But if you sexually sin, you're actually sinning against yourself. You're sinning against yourself. The Lord doesn't want that. That's what my heart grieves about homosexuality and sexual sin. You know, pornography and sexual sin and also and so forth. Is that God never created us to have that. He created us to be pure. To be holy. To be set apart. You know, for Him. You know. And, uh, but by the same token, um, you know, God looks upon our hearts and He looks for a heart of contrition. He looks for a heart that's, you know, like in the Bible it talks about, um, uh, there was a parable, and there was a guy who's caught in sin, and there was a guy, they both were caught in sin, and one guy's like, hey, no problem, <laughs> I got this, woo, yeah, you know, wink at God, you know. But the other guy's like, oh God, forgive me of my sin, <laughs> forgive me of my sin, I've been wrong, I've been wrong, please forgive me, forgive me God, he's beating his chest, you know. Wh who do you think that the Lord, we're talking God Almighty, precious Lord, wonderful God, uh, listened to and forgave? The one who beat his chest. The one who was humble. The one who was humble before God. And admitted that he was wrong. So, he or she who's involved in homosexuality, gay or lesbian, it's wrong. But you need to know why it's wrong. It's wrong because he loves you. That's why. Because he loves you. He knows what's best. He knows what's best for you. Okay? So, um, anyway... Let's kind of move on a little bit over to um, to uh, Kim Davis. Uh, you know uh, the thing with the thing with Kim Davis is uh, I, I my hats off to Kim Davis. First of all, I admire her. I respect her. Um, she chose to um, you know she chose to uh, say you know she's a clerk. She's like. You know, you're coming to me. I have authority to sign on the dotted line and so forth to say, basically to say homosexuality is okay and homosexuality is okay, excuse me. And it's like, and to say, I give authority to your marriage. Listen to me, people. That would be inconsistent, inconsistent with her belief in God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the precious Holy Spirit. And within the Bible, her belief in the Bible, it'd be inconsistent. Therefore, guess what? 
I say that Kim Davis was full of courage. Full of courage. Now, I don't care. I don't care at all that she was... You know, inside of a state government and all this stuff. Now, people could bring in and say, well, Romans 13 exists. Yes, Romans 13 does exist. Romans 13, for those who don't know, talks about that, um, you know, uh, submit to government. For government has been created by God. Absolutely. But I'll tell you what, there's a principle. It may not be stated within the Bible, but there's a principle within the Bible through the stories of Daniel in the Bible, Joseph in the Bible, and so forth, etc., um, and others and so forth that stood, you know, for righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit for the kingdom of God, you know, when it came opposed to the government and so forth, that the principle was, guess what? They stood. Daniel's a really good example. Maybe not so Joseph kind of scratched that, you know, so forth. Maybe there is. I'd have to look at it. But anyway, Daniel decided to stand against a rule that was given by um, King, I think it was King Nebuchadnezzar. You know, a certain rule that was given and so forth about, yeah, it was King Nebuchadnezzar who wanted uh, Daniel to worship him. Guess what? Daniel said, not not doing, not not happening. You understand me? Not happening. You know, I think one of the reasons that there's such a debate on this issue is because people got screwed up brains, man. They got screwed up brains. They got brains that, that, that don't know. And, you know, and the word's very clear. It's very clear. It's the renewing of your mind through the word of God, through a standard through the Holy Spirit, through, through the Bible, a standard. You know, we need to have the standard raised, you know, definitely, incredibly so. And believing in the standard, walking by the standard, living by the standard. And guess what? You live by the standard, you live by the standard of God's Word, and you will be blessed. You'll be blessed in so many different ways. Your life, your health, your wealth, your family, your friends, your contacts, your business. Um, everything, every facet that you can imagine in your life will be blessed. You will be blessed. There's no, there's no doubt about it. That's what it says in the Word of God. That's what happens. It's true. And I've experienced it. I've experienced it in my life. You know, millions, millions of Christians around the world have experienced the power of God's Word and how they're blessed. No doubt. And, and it's really simple. Simple obedience. And that's what Kim Davis did. She was simply obedient. You know, a number of times. God bless her. I'll tell you another thing that Kim Davis is. You ready? She is courageous. She is courageous. My, that's why both my hats, you know, go off to her. Off to her. God bless Kim Davis. God bless her. You know? And she decided to stand for righteousness, peace, and joy. Listen to me, people. Listen to me clear. This is just the beginning. And we thank God, hallelujah, the judge came in and said, release Kim Davis. As far as I know, I'd have to check it. I don't know yet. You'll have to uh, let me know, whatever. But uh, she hasn't been released that I know of. But we'll keep praying and believing and expecting it. And if she is, praise God, you know. If she's not, we'll just keep uh, trusting God and moving forward and expecting it in Jesus' name for her to be released, like I put in my post on Twitter. You know, these are the days where the rubber meets the road. I mean, everything is falling apart around the world. You see it in the economy. You see it within the government. You see it in the United States. You see it worldwide. It's happening, people. But you know what? It's also a glorious day to live. It's a glorious day to live. It's a glorious day to live because Jesus Christ is alive. He lives within us. And uh, he's coming back for his people. And everybody who wants to come to him, believe in him, just simple obedience, just simple, I mean, simple believing, excuse me, simple obe uh, obedience, but also simple believing, just saying, God, uh, I don't have it all together, you know, sin, but I need you. I need you to come in my life. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died and rose again from the dead and he loves me and I receive him and I believe him. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's it. And your name, according to the Word of God, is written, whoops, excuse me, in, in the Book of Life. It's written in the Book of Life, which is the book that God has up in heaven and says, hey, he or she, they're in. They're in. Get in. Get in. There's your name in the Book of Life. In. In the name of the Book of Life. In. Guess what? Your name's not in the Book of Life. Go to hell. Simple as simple. As, that's what it says in the Word. That's what it says in the Word. Does he want people to go to hell? Does he want people going back to homosexuality, being caged in homosexuality? No, he doesn't. 
He wants them rescued. He wants them delivered. He wants them healed. He wants them set free. He wants his blood, symbolically, spiritually, to come upon them and wash them clean from all their sin. To take care of it. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. That's what he desires. We know that in the Word. The Word says, I think it's in Timothy, it says, uh, He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to everlasting life. Guess what? I have everlasting life. I'm not going to die. That's the reason I can say these things. Because it's uh, having courageous by the grace of God. Not me. Him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, side note. I've been out of video for like, I think a year or whatever. Personally, why? Or tell you why? Guys, uh, ever since the stroke back in 06 and 07, I've told you that before. Uh, it has been 10 years, 9, 10 years, 8, eight to 10, 9, whatever, how many years, whatever. Of incredible, excruciating pain. So that's why I've been out of the scene and so forth. And I mean physical pain. And I won't go into it, but man. And uh, but I tell you what, uh, I feel pretty good now. I feel a lot better. A lot better than I used to, that's for sure. That's my wife and kids. Couldn't walk around here, barely. Uh, hardly do anything. Lift hands. Couldn't drive. All this type of stuff. You know, you, you name it. Just everything you can imagine. So many trials and so forth. Was I tempted to say, God, you know, God. I hate you. Actually, I did say that. You know what I'm saying? I did. I said, I hate you. I can't believe that you're allowing this. And it was at that turning point where he's like, okay, you're being totally honest with me, just like it says in the word in Job. <laughs> I'm not saying I went through Job's experience. Let's make that clear. But I went through a similar type of experience to Job. You know, he knows what we can handle, what we can't. But uh, to the glory of God, to the glory of God, even in the midst of me being honest, and that's the thing. I encourage you, be honest. Be honest with the Lord. If you're in homosexuality, you know, and so forth. Uh, be honest before the Lord. I don't know how to get out. I don't know how to stop this. I need you. Guess what? You do. You need Him. That's the truth. You know, that, that's the whole thing I believe that's happening within society right now at this particular time is people acknowledging that they need Him. It's not about, it's not about you. It's, about, or it's not about you. It's not about me. <laughs> it's about Him. It's about Him and His ways. And who he is. And how wonderful he is. And how he delivers us. And how he sets us free. And how he blesses us. And how he fills us. And how he can uh, rescue people from sin. All of us from sin. Whether you're a believer or you're an unbeliever. You know, and you struggle with sin and so forth. He's got the answer. You know why? Because he died for us. And he's God. And he's king. So get your eyes off yourself. And get it on him. That's all you got to do. And if you, if you have an issue or challenge, excuse me, to get to know him, find others that do know him. You know how you can find others that know him? Light. Light within their eyes. Light in their countenance. Where do you think that light comes from? It comes from him. It comes from him. Ask them, do they know Jesus? And you say, and, and if they say no, you go to the next person. You know Jesus? Go to the next person. You know Jesus? Yes, I do. Stick with that person. Simple. They know Jesus. That's what you want. I'm telling you, you know, you know, the world is screwed up. People are screwed up. But you know what? Just follow the Lord, and everything's simple. Everything makes sense. No complications. Less and less complexity. You know, he's not complex. He's simple. He's simple in his word. Very, very simple. Very simple. So, anyway. Let's continue to pray for Kim Davis. And let's also continue to pray for those who are in homosexuality. Personally, my heart grieves over the law that was passed here in the United States. You know, about, excuse me, gay marriage being okay within the United States. You know, even around the world. You know, I've seen it on the news around the world. But you know what? Guess what? Two things. One, it's going to get a lot worse as far as prevalence of sin. Big time, because we're in the last days. And the second of all, you know what? We have hope. We have hope. We have hope in Him. Hope in Him. And you get, guess what? You know, I'm a supernatural Christian. I believe in the supernatural Word of God, the supernatural things of the Lord. How He speaks today, how He listens to us, how He hears us, how we can see angels, demons, you know, Him Himself, even, and so forth. You know, absolutely. And, um, but at any rate, uh, with that being the case, uh, he's real, people. He's real. He's real. He, he's as real as 
is me talking to you right now in this video. He's real. You can mark it down. He's real. So, um, I don't know why I said that exactly. <laughs> but anyway, I mean about the whole thing of supernatural and whatever, but uh, uh, I'd have to think about it. I can't think about it. But anyway, uh, God is good all the time. Amen. And um, But anyway, my heart goes out to Kim, da Kim Davis. And uh, let me listen to the Holy Spirit really quick. Lord, was there something else that you wanted me to say? Um, okay. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything in particular. And he didn't remind me of anything. So anyway, um, my, my heart goes out to Kim Davis. God bless Kim Davis. Uh, thank you, Kim. For, if you're watching this, thank you, Kim Davis. God bless you. Uh, may the Lord fill you with, your, with his Holy Spirit. May he protect you. May he bless you. May he encourage you and minister to you. And um, uh, for homosexuals, God, I just pray, Father, that you would just release homosexuals from sin in the name of Jesus and bring them into righteous peace and joy within you and within life, within true life, and most of all, within everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's it, people. Uh, Johnny's back. I'm back on the videos. Lord willing, by his grace. And uh, you guys take care. And uh, God bless you. G hyphen D bless you. As that's another thing. The Lord's bringing Christians and Jews together more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Especially with these last days. And uh, we are to honor the people of God, the Jews. As you can see my flag back here. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's God's people that he chose and his nation that he chose of Israel. And... Uh, you know, I'll fight to the death for that in the name of Jesus. I'll fight to the death for the Lord. You know why? Because I don't die. None of us die. None of us die that know him. <laughs> Hallelujah. We might experience some pain or whatever, but I tell you what, as an experience, because I've had it before with the stroke, I was that close, that close, near death experience to dying. And I know, I know that I know that I know and believe that those who know him don't die. Because our spirits are alive and we don't die. We don't die. Now, if you don't know him, you do die. You, you die in your sin. You die a second death, which I can't even imagine. That's terrible. And uh, you know what? Uh, that's not God's choice. That's your choice if you make it. And he wants you to make the choice of life to be with him and so forth. So make that make that choice today. Don't be stupid. Don't think, you know, oh, I don't need him. I don't need God and so forth. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Please don't be stupid, but be smart. Be smart and say, yeah, I humble myself, get rid of my pride, and I believe in God and I trust Him. I trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive Him in my life, and uh, He'll walk, and by His Holy Spirit, you walk with Him and, and walk with Him and love Him and love others for, for Him. It's all about Him, people. It's all about Him. All right, enough said. Appreciate your time. God bless you. G hyphen D bless you. We'll be talking to you soon. And uh, sayonara. All right, bye. <laughs>